Let's go now to our friend Bimnet Abibi from Galaxy Trading. Bimnet, welcome back to Galaxy Brains. Thanks for having me. Love your sneakers. Thank by you. The way. Thank you. I took off the. Uh, you didn't like the the low the Nike Dunks I was wearing. I don't want to he, even. He's name wearing them. pandas. Apparently, they're just kind of played it's not out okay. Now. Yeah. Um, well, look. I mean, the big news in our market this week is this apparent 180 shift in the ETH ETF. Uh, approval process with the SEC. We don't have to go in depth on this because we also have Eric Balchunas coming up next on the show to talk about that specifically. But um, what else, that either that or what else is on your mind in markets this week when you're when you're you watching know, the lines and numbers? Yeah, uh, ETH ETF definitely very notable, most notable thing in, in crypto. I think it represents a big shift in the sort of political and regulatory landscape uh, for crypto. I think the ramifications will be felt, um, you know, for, for years to come. Um, as far as, you know, the actual product uh, that the ETF is, is, is providing, I think there are some, some obvious um, deficiencies in terms of, you know, staking and fees and the ability to do stuff on chain and stuff. But I'm assuming Balkunis will, yeah. will go through that stuff. I agree with that, by the way. Like we were talking about this earlier, like I feel like the delta bet in functionality between the spot and the ETF for Bitcoin is much narrower than the delta between the spot and uh, ETF for ETH in that you can't buy, you can't send or receive on chain your Bitcoin if it's in an ETF and Correct. you don't, and you lack self custody. So you don't have the same level of censorship resistance. But if you're a, a hodler, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Modeling. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a hodler, the ETH ETF is, is not so, a great product. Right. right. Because you would you're, stake, you might even restake. Correct. You certainly can't. And, and Ethereum is, is, I think, been successful because it has such a robust on chain financial market. Correct. Which you can't access. Correct. So, like, there's many more features of Ethereum that you can't use if you do the ETF. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, it's also highly convenient to hold an ETF. We talked about how it's No, and scalable. you can get, you know, margin financing, yeah. you know, for it. And so there are, there are some, some, some benefits. But fundamentally for, you know, folks looking to buy and hold uh, for the future, you're in a product that is not um, ideal. Yeah. Like the ideal form of owning ETH is you own ETH, you stake it, maybe you restake it. But... And, and you self-custody it. Um, yeah, I hear you. you know. Still a sea change, though, and, and probably a similar class of investor that we've highlighted, the primarily the advisors on the wealth platforms, the bank and broker-dealer platforms. They really can't put their clients into some stake product. I'm not aware of one for them. So it's still, I think, a big deal. But um, anyway, yeah, we'll And then the see. Grayscale product also charges you a 2% management fee. Yeah, on top yeah of we're not sure what they're going to do with that, right? I mean, well, they were two at GBDC, and then they lowered it to 1.5%, which is yeah. still... You know what's five times higher than the average other competitor. So, but there's eleven billion dollars that is n of ETH in supply there. that is now available to be redeemed. Well, will be cash. at some point. I should say too, we don't we get more into this with Balchunas, but we don't know uh, exactly when these would go live yet. What we're talking about is the 19 before process. Let's move on because we've got a whole conversation with Eric after this about that. What else are you looking at? I mean, it doesn't feel like a huge macro week, really. Yeah, you know, I think what's notable um, in macro has been the strength in the commodity complex recently. Um, you know, gold is hovering around, you know, high 2300s and broke through 2400, you know, all time high areas. You know, silver had a breakout through 30, you know, multi year highs, um, looking like it wants to trend higher. You know, we've seen, you know, things like platinum trade well today. Um, Nat gas was on a tear because of, you know, some concerns in, in, in Europe um, around a, a mm -hmm. shortage. Uh, and so, you know, th there's a lot of commodities that have become uh, very topical um, and kind of uncorrelated to, to, to broader uh, markets. And, and those things are very notable. Um, and a lot of the, 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 the change you're, you're seeing in those markets is, is very structural in nature in terms of, you know, foreign central banks and, and foreign, you know, sovereign wealth funds and, mm -hmm. you know, really thinking through the, the de-dollarization, the focus on, on kind of uh, hard assets. Um, and so, you know, you've seen, you know, basically the Chinese buy a ton of gold, um, like, you know, places like India buy, buy silver. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, to, to kind of get away from, you know, the U.S. dollar in a way. Um, and then ultimately, I think what matters for markets on the next six months is really the election. You've got two very different outcomes for, for markets based on, on who wins. We've talked about Trumponomics mm -hmm. in, you know, two episodes ago. It was ago. a great conversation, by the way. You should go back and listen if you didn't hear that one. Uh, but high level, Trump means tariffs, uh, which is inflationary. Uh, it means uh, uh, 
folks getting deported like crazy. So labor shortages uh, also probably means, uh, you know, a, a permanent tax cuts and increases in, in defense spending. So it's very um, inflationary. Um, and also for the geopolitics, you know, presents some, some more risks. Yeah. And so, you know, that's kind of the inflationary backdrop. I think either president is, is probably going to be good for stocks. And then on the other side, you know, you might have some some tax increases. You might have, um, you know, I, I would say both parties, whoever wins, is going to be bad for the fiscal situation. <laughs> Do, yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't feel like Trump didn't cut when he was in office. He spent yeah. a lot. He yeah. probably can. They're both populist, really. They're, they're exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, in the, in the Biden administration as well, you're probably going to see uh, a more honest reaction to inflation from Fed officials in terms of their uh, willingness to potentially even hike rates or hold rates higher for longer yeah. versus, you know, under Trump, you know, he's going to appoint officials that are going to be more inclined to cut sooner rather than later and Treasury policy that's a little bit more lenient. And so it's a tale of, of two presidents. And that, you know, I think as you start to see the Trump odds increase or decrease, you'll see the, the market move in one, one direction or the other. But those are really, I mean, the election is really the next big thing. Yeah, it's a big deal for crypto, too. We're starting to find Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Um, like I was Seems talking like about. crypto might win in either way. It's, it's like. Yeah, it's, I mean, it does. It, I, I think it, it, it almost can't have gotten worse than the prior couple years. So I think it probably does get better, even if the current administration stays. Here's the thing. You were talking about crypto, too. Uh, 2012, Obama's re-election to 2016. Yes. Crypt, was crypto higher or lower? Uh, actually, actually, in that one, I think it, it was it, higher. Well, it was well, actually it, it was higher. It actually did get high at the beginning and then was low. Well, let's try this one again. 2016, Trump starts his election. He gets elected. He comes out in 2020. Was, did Bitcoin end up higher or lower during that administration? <laughs> A lot higher. A lot higher, sure. Okay, yeah. 2020, Biden comes in, and uh, it's about to be 24. You think at the end of 20, <laughs> the start of 2020, uh, was Bitcoin higher or lower in his administration? Uh, it, was, it was higher. Like tonight, a lot higher. Yeah. So yeah. Trump or anyone wins in November. It's, well, four years from now, 2028, where do you think? Bitcoin higher or lower? Well, I, you sure, all right, higher. But like <laughs> that, you could say that about any risk asset, basically. I, that's true. You know? Is that like inflation? That, it's, it's the stock market. It's yeah. inflation. That's a good point. It's, it's insane money I was say, printing. The Biden, the, that it's deflation. Yeah, like, that original Obama like, one is pretty bad because actually there was that big peak in 2012, 13 where it hit like 1300 bucks. Yeah. And then actually at, in 2015, 16, it was down like the two to $500 range. So actually that one was lower. But I'm just saying, yeah, like I think we're higher no matter what. Yeah. I think we're probably – and part of that might also be fiscal too. I mean like you it's said. It's fiscal, but it's also just so many structural things that are happening all at once, yeah. right? You know, you take the, the AI stuff, right, in terms of, you know, you've got to re-engineer power grids to, you know uh, – take into account that the you know the AI processing data centers are going to be you know super energy right it's the yep. infrastructure stuff that that has to get done it's the onshoring right it's it it's all of these things that are structural in nature that are going to get done over the next couple of years and on top of that you're talking about a government that spends you know over 5% of gdp in, yeah. in in deficit spending and so when you throw in the fiscal impulse on top of the huge structural changes that the economy is about to go through it's really hard to see how like growth does not you know remain elevated yeah. in the us and yeah. that should be good for, for risk assets yeah it should um and it's, yeah i mean we're in i mean the inflation shit is so bad yeah i mean it's i so sticky it's so sticky, and the, and when the you actually walk around people, in your daily life, it's like feels high. Yeah, and 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 really, what it is is like I just constantly feel like the these central bankers are just misrepresenting and and basically lying to to everyday people. Um, it's and, like gaslighting. It, 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 it's so insane. It's like, like no, 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 inflation's like getting lower. It's pretty lower. It's up slightly over a couple of months, slightly. but it's like still, and it's like. I, I was trying to order. I, I looked at a deli that I used to like to order from in New York. I, like not an expensive place. Eighteen ninety five for a chicken quesadilla. Eighteen. Granted, this is Lower Manhattan, but I'm just saying, like, some guy, dude, it's it's to, it's a tortilla with cheese and some chicken. I yeah, like, I, I, twenty I, bucks. I was in a chat with somebody the other day. This guy ordered like a burrito and nachos in Chicago for pickup on an app. It was thirty six dollars. Like it's insane. Chipotle. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, and but you see but it, it's not. It's not about that. It's it's yeah. about the genuine, honest conversation that people need to have out loud. Yeah. Right. It it it's not like Powell can't go up on TV and be like, I can't control for fiscal. 
Like somebody needs to go on TV and tell me this shit is bad. Yeah. Do the math for the next 10 years. Somebody needs to tell yeah, the American that people yeah. that this is what our liabilities look like on a go forward basis. Yeah. Right. We have to keep the dollar as it does you know, feel like the this, like in a, in a in a more classic, iconic American age, somebody like a Powell would stand up and tell the truth because it matters for the country. Don't give me this like, oh, the, well, the politics and bureaucracy of the Fed versus the Treasury. I'm not supposed to, like, get to. No, dude, the country could. Be, who cares about that to. divide yeah. if the country collapses because you guys Absolutely. screw this whole thing up? And like, please, somebody stand up and be an adult about yeah, it. But the, the also the issue is it's just like if. Like if there was a 30 year old that was the Fed chairman, right? Like we would be enacting different policies. And very if Congress afraid. was like 35 year olds, right? <laughs> yeah. Like it's just it's just so different. We're so nearsighted, and the long term impacts are insane. Yeah. Think about running five to six de percent deficits ad infinitum. Your what portion of the budget is going to be paying interest in 15 years? Uh, what all of like, it? Like how are people not freaking out about this and like ringing the bell yeah, you won't and being have like, money for anything, like, Republican or Democratic, right? Stuff and that it's you want. Like, and I'm like. Come on, people. Like, it let's is like, math. Like, cut, like, you need to cut spending and raise taxes, like, immediately. Everyone knows this. This is the and pure math. Like, but you can't do it because it's an election cycle. It's so messed up. And it's up. always an election cycle. Like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, well, that's a structural issue. You're yeah. telling me Congress guy has got to get elected every two years, senators every six. Yeah. Like, he's running to, like, get raise money three months into the job. He's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah. I'm on the phone fundraising yeah. instead of being like, how do I fix this America. stuff for my constituents? Yeah. But it's it's absolutely asinine. Yeah. I don't know. So. Yeah, well, hey, look, we're building an alternative uh, that you could maybe opt out with. At least Bitcoin is that story. But it's, it's I mean, I, I love it, but but it's like, the you know, the, the, it, it doesn't solve the main issue. Not everybody no. has Bitcoin. No. Right? And, like, yes, that's a great way for people that already have money to, to store their wealth Good because point. it will. But for the folks that don't, right, like, it, it putting them in worse and worse situations. 100%. And, and separately, like, Bitcoin or not, we have a country that we care yes. about and love. And the math is pretty straightforward. And they won't tell us this. They yeah. keep us focused on, like, the next month, the next FOMC meeting, the next earnings call. Like, it's no, dude. Like, someone's got to take a long view on this thing. Somebody's got to take a long – but my – part of the issue, though, is, like, I don't know how many of these politicians in Congress genuinely understand the issue. I don't think they do. And, and, and like, that – I saw a guy stand up now during the Fit 21 debate. Uh, the guy has no idea what he's talking about. He's clearly been given this uh, – he's proposing amendment. I don't think he's ever spoken before in Congress. Right. They're probably like, Did here you go. Did you see that Biden administration uh, economic official the other day? No, which one? Being asked about, oh, how does money work? Oh, the my God. You're talking, about the, you're talking about the one in the uh, documentary? Yes. Uh, Stephanie Kelton's documentary, yes. I mean, yes. that guy – you got guys that went on the House floor being like, global warming doesn't exist because I got snow in my hand. <laughs> like, like, it is absolutely asinine. <sighs> Oh, man. Well, you're not asinine, my friend. Thanks for coming on Galaxy Brains. We'll check in with you next week. Maybe we'll be more, uh, we'll have some more, more numbers of data or something to talk about. Uh, my friend, Ben Matabudi from Galaxy Brains, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.